So welcome, Lauren. Thank you for having me. Daddy. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how have you been? How's your day been? Not too bad, you know. Just a normal day in Lauren's world. Yes. So what does that involve? Off. So meetings after meetings and loads of preparation and strategy. So obviously as a market manager, it's just always strategy and creative ideas and just making sure things are in place. And today, my day was Zaddy Day. Oh. It was a Zaddy Day, you know. <laughs> so obviously you got a release tomorrow that we're yes, excited about. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've been more my brain's in like Zaddy World today. Oh so, my yeah. gosh. I couldn't be I couldn't be more touched. I couldn't be more touched. <laughs> yes, yeah, so actually that over the course of this section where I'm gonna be talking to Lauren, we're gonna be playing some of the artists that Lauren has worked with it on their releases. And one of them will actually be an unreleased song of mine, which is coming out at midnight tonight. Hey, <laughs> everyone go stream that, yeah? yeah. Do that, do that, do Yes. That. Um, okay, so Lauren, what was your first step into the music industry? How did you know you wanted to work in that area? So I've always been into music. So like from a young age, I was like fascinated with like tapes and vinyls and oh, okay. like, there was loads of that stuff in my house. So there's like pictures of me like sitting at CD players and stuff. Like it's on my Instagram and people are like, that'd be oh, a great so EV cute. cover. Like if he was an artist, and I was like, if I could sing, I then maybe <laughs> if I could rap maybe, but sadly I'm not, I can't do any, yeah. any, any of the two. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I grew up that way and it was always in my soul. My mom actually always said to me, like I kind of saw it in you from a young age. I just didn't know how it was going to play out. Mm. Um, and then when I got to uni, I did a media course um, and I wanted to be a music journalist because I liked writing and I started writing a blog on my own. Mm. Um, and I kind of just started my career literally in the house. Um, I didn't know anyone in music. I didn't know anything about it. And then I just started creating this blog in between, you know, uni, and then um, slowly, as I started doing, I started meeting a few people and going to a few events that like I was blogging about. Um, and then I actually started getting invited to one extra events by the BBC. Ooh. They start, they picked up on the blog, which was really nice. Mm. And I remember I was like, oh my goodness, this is mad. Like they know who I am. <laughs> um, and then off the back of that, I ended up going to a couple of events around London at the time. And one of those was the Sunday show, which anyone of my kind of age, towards the late 20s, early 30s, I know I'm aging myself right now, <laughs> um, knows of that show. It used to be in Leicester Square every Sunday. And it was a place where all the mus uh, musicians from the black music scene at the time mm. were performing. So think like gets Ed oh, Sheeran, mad, everyone mad, did that mad. kind of stuff. It was okay. crazy, iconic times. Yeah. And Mo the Comedian, Mo Gilligan was the host. No! So if that just shows you like the groundwork oh that, it was like the place that was developing talent across the board. Yeah, that's mad. Some great comedians as well that have gone on to do commercial success as well. Mm. It was an amazing night. And then one of the founders of the event was like, oh, so you blog, do you want to take over the website? And I was like, cool. Mm. So I took over this on the show TV website. We do press junk junkets. We'd go everywhere, just interviewing artists, doing content, and literally like you're making like zero money. But it was yes. so fun, and it was in between uni. And then off the back of that, I ended up working for one of his other events that he did in Shoreditch. And then I started going to other comedy nights because I kind of just enjoyed the the vibe. Met a guy called Matthew Bridgman. He runs a club night called Faded um, with Taser okay. Black, who's part of Free Shots Tequila, the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, know that. I know that. That's funny. Started working for Faded at the time, so mm. doing loads of social media stuff with them, promoting promoting the event. It was like literally in like a hundred cap venue at the time. Yeah. And it's their ten year anniversary. Wow. This year, so it's wow. Crazy to that must know. be amazing. Yeah. And then off the back of that, I worked at Jump Off TV, and everyone knew Jump Off TV because they had crazy events as well based around the hip hop scene, and they had UK and US team. Mm. So it was like worldwide. Mm. That was amazing. And this was all during my uni years. Um, and so slowly I became into like events rather than writing. Yeah. And were you at uni in London? Yes. So do you think that played quite a big Absolutely. role? Absolutely. I made the conscious um, choice to stay in London. Mm. It was very lonely at first and all my friends left. They went to go do the party and yeah. they went to go do all the, you know, the yeah. freshers raves. And yes. I was just here at home. Know the vibes. <laughs> yeah. Like living at home still. And I'm just like, yeah. I have no friends. Yeah. It's not even Who cash though. That is Literally. That, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was the, luckily the year before they went up with the fees. So oh, I was, okay, okay, I yeah. was so yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're great. So <laughs> literally, I would go yeah. uni and then like, run to an event, go to oh, uni, wow. run to riot, and just yeah. like, I don't even know how I did it, but I just, mm. I got through it. And luckily I graduated. So yes, congrats. I was cool. Thank hey. you very much. Thank you, thank you, yes, thank you. amazing. And then um, off the back of that, I um, saw a job while I was working retail. I used to work in Selfridges actually, just oh, selling okay. shoes, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. getting paying the bills. Get a little bit of discount yeah. at the time. Yeah, I can't yeah. lie, okay. loads of nice shoes. That it was great. Good. good times, yeah. good times. Um, and I met some really nice people who are still friends of mine today who mm. have gone on to do amazing stuff. One of them is actually an A&R as well. No way. Crazy. Like, what, are the, what are the chances? I know, right? And we used to just talk about music while yeah. we were just on the shop floor. Maybe it's the kind of fashion element Yeah, of there was so many creatives in a building yeah. like everyone's gone on to do some sort of creative job working no, fashion amazing. or music mm. and it's a really nice place um and then i saw a job for i love live mm. and this was like in 2015 so i remember i was like cool i'm still pretty young and what what is i love live for people who don't know so for i love live 
It's a live events and music artist development and management company. And it's basically all based around supporting new talent. So the tagline is actually new talent first. So we want to support people from early. It's been around for 18 years, which mm, is crazy. That is wild. Crazy, crazy. And um, it started obviously as a live music night. Same kind of time as the Sunday show what I mentioned before. Yeah. And um, it was like, you know, Ed Sheeran came through the doors there too. Mm, I saw Ed Sheeran mentioned it on a On a ZZ podcast Mills twice. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said that yeah. he met some friends there that yeah, he's always friends with today. And yeah. she's so lovely to hear. Emily Sandy met Naughty Boy there. Mazai. Ended up making her first album, which broke her through the Oh scene. my gosh. Crazy. You, trying to, you, you need to be taxing that. Like. I, I know, right? We always ain't it. Like, guys, you know, yeah. we like, who we put on the map, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it's an amazing place. And um you you will know Zaddy in mm. particular, like our office is filled with pictures just from the back in yes, the day of just like tiny temper. Yeah, yeah, just everyone that's came through the doors and it's just amazing to see. Mm. So yeah, when I got the job, it was actually a year placement mm-hmm. and I was in there end up being there three and a half years. Oh wow, okay. So I ended up just kind of doing everything there, events management, artist development, mm-hmm. helping with the management here and there, but mainly events, um and I love doing it, but um I got to a point where I was like, I wanna try something new. Yeah. Um and the team were really understanding and then um, I started helping with the artist development program. So the artist development program is a program that runs 18 months and we invest money into the acts to help them kind of just get to the next step of mm-hmm. their career. And I love doing it, but I knew that I wanted to kind of sharpen my skills. Yeah. So me being me, took the risk, left my job, the guys were guided. I was yeah, guided I can too. imagine that must have been a, that must have been difficult because if that's the first time you've done a job for three years in a row, that must have been a difficult Yeah, move. it was weird. Yeah. I was scared. Um, but I quit and I went to do my master's degree. Oh, wow. Okay. And that was in music business management. Yeah, and was that in London as well? Yeah, it was in London. Yeah. So Westminster Uni. So yeah. big up them because mm. the course there, it's an amazing course. Really? Um, it covers everything from legal to a and in to marketing, everything. And it's the place where it's either you want to start your journey properly or if you're already on your music journey, kind of just sharpen your skills and think, cool, reevaluating and know you where you want to go next. Mm. So I did that. I still kept in touch with the I Love Live team. They've always been there. They've always been in my lives. Yeah. And um, I even did like freelance work with them in between. I've never kind of yeah. fully left. Yeah, like, I yeah, always leave, always... but I've got that like, one foot in the door. It's like that breakup you have when you're like, you're not really yeah. ready to leave. And you it's s- like, I'm still alive. You're dabbling. But, you know, yeah, you're dabbling. It's not right for on, me. Yeah, on a drunken night out. Yeah. And then <laughs> the drunk text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. equivalent would be an email. Do you want some help yeah, here? Yeah, or yeah. Did, oh, Lauren, you know what? We really missed you. Would you be able to help with this? And I'm like, oh, go on then. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's actually kind of a good reason why maybe it's not always best to cut ties it's not always absolutely you know I mean? like and this is a business based on relationships it 100%. is i actually don't like that i i, <laughs> I don't know I, I don't not like it but i feel like it's, sometimes it's just it's like, what i did my dissertation on yeah my I, masters. I really it's just i don't want it to be an issue if like i don't like you or like you've been mm-hmm, difficult towards mm-hmm, me and like mm-hmm. that is the difficult thing about this industry is that it's just like you can annoy someone and then uh that your name's been dragged through oh, i'm honestly, not saying this happens no, to me maybe it, sh- it has but it is like that i would I doubt that very oh, much. Stop You're a good you. soul. Stop You're you. a good soul. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it is definitely a people's business, yeah. and um, some people it's unfortunate, but you know you might get ahead just for the fact that you are friends with someone. Yeah, someone might have that more is very skills common, than you. isn't it? Yeah, and it's annoying and it's hard, but it's just the name of the game. Yeah, so you have to kind of stay strong, and you know I'm quite a reserved person naturally. It's not in my, it's not in my like foundations of me to be like outgoing, but mm. music pushed me to be a more outgoing person because of that as- aspect of the business. Yeah. Um, and it's made me, you know, meet more people and it's mm. been nice. I like it. It's like personal growth for myself. So, yeah. and I still think there's always work to be done, but it's been nice. Yeah. Um, uh, so tell me about what it was like when you ended up going to Sony. So you started, you left yes. I Love Live. So I left I Love Live, did the masters yeah. and off the back of the masters, I got a job. So mm. that was one good thing I liked about the masters. It was yeah. a practical masters too. So I ended up working for a small um, indie label called Marathon Artists. Oh yes. I know um, for an imprint called Moose Recordings in particular. Mm. who focused on black music, um, particularly like Afro beats and yeah. stuff like that. And I learned to do digital marketing there and I still use that skill to this day. That's dope. Um, and um, I was doing that job and then I kind of got head hunted by a few people that were found in a new imprint called Dream Life Records mm. at Sony. Um, so shout out the guys. Um, shout out Shane. I know he tuned in. Say hey. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, so they were starting this new label and um, so I remember the other label like, you're leaving us already. And yeah. I was like, yeah, but this Sony. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's yeah. a new label yeah. and it's something run by three black men. Yeah. And I think that's been really important from some of my background who's come yeah, from, completely. you know, from a Caribbean household. Yeah. Um, and it's like nice to see representation, totally. especially in the UK. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to take the risk and I tried it. And it had its ups and downs. That's just mm. the honest truth. And in it, in it, I was like, you know, it's not for me. And then I ended what up. What made you think that at times? Do you know what it was? 
the label the major label system is very different mm. there's um, a lot of levels to it um, every move you make you have to go through about four or five people okay, that, it's what yeah. keeps the ship moving yeah. like the ship has it's to like move it's like a big company absolutely like, yeah. there's rules there's regulations so um, you can only do certain things or you have to make sure you do it in a certain time frame and a lot of it's in other people's hands Yeah. and that was a bit of a struggle for me mm. um and just learning that process but i don't regret it at all yeah like I'm s- yeah it was like i learned so much from mm. that experience the good and the bad you know and i still have a lot of that experience to this day that i use I even friendships off the back of it as yeah. well and i'm really grateful for those relationships and um so off the back of the sony job and i'm going freelance it's just by chance around that time when i was kind of going through the transition stage mm. in my mind i love life came calling you come again. back to the x you the always g- end up coming back to the x <laughs> what can i say you know you're like i'm still in love yeah <laughs> i love you guys yeah. you know um so i was like do you know what i really miss helping people mm. and when you're in labels obviously you're always helping people yeah. but it's a business at the end of the day yeah. people forget because music's creative it's a business yes. money has to be made exactly. things have to be generated yeah and i love life obviously we're a business but we're a not-for-profit organization mm. i work for and um, I also wanted to continue doing digital marketing. I kind of missed doing digital marketing. Yeah. And then that's when I started my business, Hidden Courage. Mm. So I started Hidden Courage to kind of do digital marketing and music strategy for other artists, especially new up and coming artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've started to expand that as well into other areas. I want to kind of work across creative people as a whole. Oh, I see. Because you must, that's the thing that you have one of those rare insights in that you've worked in the place that has the keys. Like you've worked in the major labels that have that big marketing arm. They know a lot about how to run successful campaigns yeah. so it's like it's probably it seems probably quite a rare thing that someone leaves that and then wants to kind of bring it to independent artists yeah. of all different yeah. types so that's an amazing thing to do a round of applause thank for you yourself. very much <laughs> thank you thank you um but no that's what's been the best bit about kind of going the journey this way yeah like, obviously you just don't know where you're going but mm. when i look back i'm thinking the fact i can take elements of a major label and implement it into a not-for-profit mm. back to artists that they might not have access to or yeah. you know some artists they don't want to sign to majors it's yeah. just not for them um and i think that's okay it's everyone's journey is their own journey mm-hmm. so if we can take elements of that but merge it with what you're looking for then why not that's yes, how i see it really. that's crazy that's such a beautiful beautiful story and then what do you see as the next steps for your business where do you see that going i think obviously i'm um, like my so my heart is i love life and my heart is hidden courage yeah i think it's a bit of both so one thing i like about the business is that i get to explore different things and try different things mm-hmm. Um, working with different types of businesses and other artists and kind of just kind of tr- you know it's nice to kind of know something's your own you have ownership of something yes um, and then for I Love Live it's just I want to help kind of re you know re brand again like yeah. we've been around for a long time it's a, a company that's been around many years and people don't realise like how much we offer and there's this, it's a tiny team yeah. it's a tiny tiny team um, from obviously like the artist development program how we met and we mm-hmm. do some amazing stuff that way we're still doing events to support up and coming artists yeah. and there's not many showcase artists anymore mm. across the uk not just london we do shows in birmingham and manchester um other cities in between that as well and also just helping publicize the management side as well we manage yeah. artists as well and work with some really great people through that as well yeah. um so i'm really grateful to learn from the team as well like obviously the company's founded by people you know so rachel john and victor who work with me they all have had loads of experience and I'm the youngest in the team. Yeah. So it's like kind of having like your music aren't you and I'm course. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you need. I kind of feel like that <laughs> so when I go say to like, the offices. Oh, would you think? Yeah, yeah like you it's, feel nice. it's like a safe haven. Yeah. You totally. know, and if I need some advice, I'm like, okay, guys, what do you think of this? Or what do you think of that? Yeah. Um, and then I, they come to me to bring mm. aspects of things because I've kind of been outside now and I've come, yeah. you know, they yeah. use the analogy of like, you know, when your kid leaves home, oh yeah, and they're like, oh, but you know, you like leaving at home, but you kind of want to come in the comfort of home, yeah, but still yeah. live independent. Yeah, that's kind of what I do there. It's like I've gone away Jenny. and taken you got the best both and worlds. Then, yeah, yeah, and I bring yeah. it back, that's and then wonderful. I'm like, guys, this is how it's working outside. Let's, let's try let's, this. Let's 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 update some things. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do now is get into a couple of tracks that you've worked on. So Lauren's worked with a plethora of artists. Wow, Thank has that he got a big vocab? But um, <laughs> this, <laughs> this one I'm actually gonna premiere. So it's just it's just gone ten past two. I'm gonna premiere a new song of mine. Woo, I'm excited. Yes. I'm actually excited. This I mean, is my tune. Yeah, I'm like, I know I'm biased because <laughs> I'm helping you with the record. But honestly, I love the song. Oh my gosh! So this is coming out at midnight. Um, it's another song of mine, which is with a good friend and a really talented artist called Nina Cobham. So um, yeah, go check it out. Zaddy timing featuring Nina Cobham, and here it is. And this is the first one we're playing of tunes lauren has worked on in some capacity she's helped me massively with this release so um yeah i hope you guys enjoy it let's get it 